it's Saturday, it's, I don't know, 8th of July? Yes, yes, yeah, last, yeah, day. And um, we're on our way to pick up eggs, which is the, <laughs> the only, <laughs> this is the only time in the week where Grace and I usually have a long enough stretch, stretch of like undisturbed, uninterrupted time to record a podcast and I so I don't this isn't my ideal situation because again we're in the car there's a lot of background noise I'm trying to speak loudly yeah I I use plugins that will take away some of the noise um, but it's still I hope that it is um, listenable right yeah. to, uh, to anyone and I will compress it and do what I can to clean up the sound as I always do but uh, anyway, the topic for today is basically an update on our understanding and experience with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still going, and so COVID's many people, over. so many people feel that this is absolutely a thing of the past. Like best guesses, best estimates we can see now, which aren't very good are still like 6,000 people a month dying of COVID. Oh, at, yeah. At least. Yeah, something in that. Right. I mean, depending on how you count. And but if you're very conservative, you look at 6,000. This is based only on the numbers I'm able to see about excess deaths. Yep. Right? And not even broken down by, um, by COVID tests because the COVID test data is so broken. lacking. Re really kind of irrevocably broken. Non-existent. And... and let's be very clear that that's by design that's by design we got the eggs i'm going to be right back i'm pausing all right we got our eggs um one one reason we hope that the recording is better today is that we're not running the car's ac at maximum <laughs> yes and yes. that is such a relief we actually have a cooler day today Great. and God. We've had, between the, the smoke, the Canadian wildfire smoke, oh, holy shit. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Okay, so, we, we just, I said that because we're driving along this dirt road out uh, by the these, farms, these farms, right? and um, uh, uh, an enormous eagle just took off right like the size of the hood like the wingspan was the as broad as the hood <laughs> like the size of a turkey vulture almost right you know right. It's huge just took off right in front of us right and it's flapping around it like just a few feet away right. and it was just uh it was kind of intense. just astounding to see anyway but yeah we've it's it's been super hot hot enough to affect our health honestly yes and keep us indoors and our AC has been struggling. It is working. It's working. But on these very hot days. But it's been. It's we're like, I'm saying mid 90s with high humidity so that the feels like it's well over 100. Over 100. Yes. It's. Um, it feels like, yes. Yeah. Definitely. And the, in the afternoons, the AC can't keep up. And, and in my office where I work, it's getting up to like 85. And it's just yeah. fucking miserable. Sorry. Yeah, miserable. Pardon my French. Um, you yeah, know, the poor AC is running. Well, it may not be running that well also because there's like a ceiling fan in there. And I turn that on and it's barely, it's spinning very slowly even at the high setting. And I was like, what's that about? But then I look at the UPS, which is like beeping and clicking occasionally. And I yeah. see that the, the line voltage is like 110, not 120. So yeah. that may have something to do with it. <laughs> that like the, the voltage is actually too, too low right. because of everyone's AC mm -hmm. on, the, on the local circuit, you know, on our right. local power grid. Um, so that sucks. Anyway. <laughs> so that sucks. Moving on. <laughs> but I'm glad we have all these um, UPSs. Yes. So that to try to keep at least my work stuff up and running. Up and running know. and functional. But anyway, I'm 
slithering. But yeah, the wildfire smoke was almost to the hazardous, to the highest rating. It was almost to 300. Pretty bad. Uh, AQI. Yeah. And with these 2.5 particulates, micrometers, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. um, which are bad for you. Yeah, that's some bad stuff. And people are probably not cautious enough about this shit, but... Um, Definitely not cautious now, because, you know... This stuff lodges in your lungs and goes right into your bloodstream and brain and organs. And, um, yeah. These tiny, tiny particles. It's very bad news. And I saw... So, I people often talk about our, you know, the Ann Arbor area and... Uh, well, not people. Me. I talk about what a racist shithole it is. And um, part of my motivation for choosing our neighborhood is, is that um, I saw a lot of black, black children... In the neighborhood. Milling around in the neighborhood unsupervised. They don't, their parents don't feel the need to keep them locked up, locked up or, or like watching them like a hawk because they don't expect people to come along and harass them. Harass or, them, right. You know, whatever they do. They expect them to be moved freely through the neighborhood. And just the other day, I did see a group of these sort of, uh, um, a group of black and Hispanic teenagers on our street. Yeah. And they're this, this sort of like a, uh, middle class teenagers that are hanging out in the summertime. Yeah. They were clearly on their way back from Rolling Hills and they were smoking weed. And yeah. it was like a you know, maybe five or seven kids, black and Hispanic. And um, but they're also the kinds of kids whose parents use seatbelt and put helmets on them when they ride their bikes, etc. Right. And they were all walking around smoking weed in hazardous air hazardous quality. Air quality. <laughs> That's like... So um, and they really are the demographic of people who are taking precautions with their health yes. when they're told to. Yes. They, it gets they haven't particularly been told to. They haven't been told to. They're not informed about that. And it's a demographic that would be getting informed and looking for that information yeah. and taking action. Particularly particulates. See what I did there? I see what you did there. So, yeah. No, I noticed that. that and it's, it's disheartening. Oh, yeah. To be honest, it's disheartening. And it's much better today. It's more like 50 um, today. But... That's still worse than it should be. Yeah. And it's, and it's not good. And it's coming in waves when the jet stream shifts and the smoke plume shifts direction. Mm -hmm. And um, very likely it'll be back. And very likely yes. this will continue well into the fall. Yep. And this is some shit. Yeah, this is some like, shit. This is like, you know... The apocalypse is actually here. It's just not effects aren't evenly distributed. Yet. Right. We even right. with zombies, all these you know, <laughs> even right. with zombies. Right. These people still continuing on as if nothing is happening. Come on. Let's go. Let's fly to New Orleans for. for let's fly to New Orleans for dinner. Yeah. Let's fly to New Orleans for brunch. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's happening. So anyway, but yeah, back to the COVID topic. Um, I did have news I wanted to share because it was exciting news and it's something we've been trying to arrange and plan for a long time. Oh, it's like six months, more than six months. Yes, and I want to talk about why it's so hard to do this. Mm -hmm. But um, we got a booster of Novavax. Whee! And honestly, we both would have preferred, I think, to get in, to do a new primary series of two okay. shots. Yep. Um, because... We believe it's been long enough, but, um, yeah. but uh, I was interested in Novavax not just because um, I felt like I needed a booster, because if I just felt like I needed a booster, there's, you know, mRNA the boosters, bivalents out there. But I actually did not get a bivalent booster for various reasons, one of which is the places that I might have gotten it didn't seem to be doing COVID safety anymore. And getting right. COVID at a vaccine appointment just seemed like the most stupid, ironic uh, right. situation. I, I didn't want to participate in that setup for a joke, you know. No, no. Especially when you're the, the butt of, of the it. Joke. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but Novavax seemed very promising. It seemed to pro the the studies on it seemed like it provides longer lasting protection, and also people in the long COVID community have reported that getting a Novavax right. shot, uh, this is not, uh, there's not a big study on this. There's it's not a big, big RCT yet, but yep. but there are anecdata. <laughs> sort of of anecdata. In between, when, when it's like not just one anecdote, but it becomes uh, many anecdotes, mm -hmm. that some 
percentage of people with long COVID symptoms see a significant improvement after Novavax yes. injection. Yes. So we did that. And you want to talk about how and why and when and um, circumstances? So it's a little over a week ago. Um, and um, I had been looking to get access to Novavax since last September. And it's dicey, right? If you, and it's all around um, sort of uh, kettling folks who have already had an mRNA vaccine yes. into taking more MR, mRNA vaccines and actually literally blocking them yeah. from accessing um, any other vaccine. And we saw something similar with Johnson & Johnson. Yes, which is actually just no, no longer exists anymore. It's right. off the market, it no longer exists. Right, and it's, in Michigan, there is, besides all the federal issues. federal issues and whatnot, there is this, like, issue of the fact that Pfizer is at least uh, allegedly, at least um, ostensibly headquartered in Michigan. Oh, yes. It's, so for and a lot of people, it's their employer yeah. in some capacity. And so they're supporting their local employer, right. you know, which doesn't help any because... It's, bias. it's a bias. Yeah. It's, it's a significant bias. Right. And in its local environment. Uh, to me, there are lots of anti-vax arguments floating around. I'm not particularly an anti-vaxxer. I don't really identify that way. But I think we need to look at the effectiveness of various literal products on the market, yes. right? And to me, there's not a good argument. I don't have a good argument to ever get a, a, a Pfizer mRNA vax of any type again. No. I just don't. The, there isn't a good one. I mean, unless they're going to have something where they give it, they administer it every four months. Yeah. Or like every yeah. three to four months, you're eligible for another Pfizer booster. Yeah. And then there are some big questions about, like, what, the, just, what that means. I'm really concerned, actually, about this phenomenon called original antigenic sin and how this, how, like, your exposure to this multiple doses of this either identical or very similar formulation right. can prime your immune system to um, only to react only to the initial strain and not match not a really good response. neutralization response to an evolved strain. And we know that the virus is mutating rapidly. Yes. And so we want, I wanted personally to try What's the technical nature of the Novavax? I can't remember the phrase. It's a protein subunit vaccine. Protein subunit, okay. So it, it is a, it does not use this, I, I'm not entirely opposed to experimentation with mRNA as a vaccine technology. I, I, I just didn't see it work very well, right? Uh, yeah, and, and we, have, we haven't. I don't believe that it, it ca causes these massive side effects. It doesn't make you susceptible to mind control via 5G. It doesn't quantum entangle you with other vaccine recipients, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I've not seen that happen. Right. But um, it but, just doesn't seem that effective. The right? government psyops do do that. That's another story <laughs> that, entirely. Yeah, right. The, um, but this one is actually, it's a more traditional design. It's a more traditional design with which, with which we are much more familiar. It's a more, uh, so you could say it's a more time-tested technology. It's, yes, it's a very, it's a reliable time-tested technology right. that is extremely similar to Soberana 2 in Cuba. Yeah, and we, it's not so easy for an American citizen to, to go get a Cuban, Cuban vaccine. vaccine, but if we, well, like, if it had been easier, that is absolutely what we would have gone for. We would have actually just gone to Cuba and gotten everyone vaccinated so far the Yes. Because they actually had, they start, yeah, they did not reopen things until they vaccinated all their children. Yeah. Right? And actually, they reopened with masking and Sobrana too. And... And Cuba, a place yeah. where capitalism, by definition, isn't quite the driving force, especially monopolistic capitalism, right, right. isn't quite the driving force of public health that it is here. We believe they actually do follow the science. You know, they're better at it. They're, they're be better yeah. able to. They're better able to follow the science. Yes. I mean, they have, they have their own political issues, of right? Of course. But um, but they're better able to follow the science with as to public health and public health with. In the, with this caveat, right? Um, the science does indicate 
depending on your um, on your persuasion about what you want to use science for. But hey, maybe just like killing a swath of the population off is a good idea. Like so, you know, if yeah. you think that's a good idea, right. then you're following the science right now in the U.S. Yeah. But if that's not your presupposition, and that's not your sort of like um, philosophical frame, yeah. then what we're doing now has no correlation with any scientific evidence. Right. Like it's none. Right. And, you know, like, uh, as far as, I, I don't actually regret getting an original series mRNA vax and one booster. Mm -hmm. But I did try to get a mixed booster. In other yes. words, I tried to get a J&J &J booster because there was some evidence that mixing vaccines What's an actually person? produced a better immunity, produced a better A better outcome. immune response, yes. Right, and I was like, yeah, I, I want to try and follow the science. And that's what, that's, there was some science there to follow. Right. But I actually had a bait and switch happen where I, they told me that they oh, had yeah, we got J, 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 and J ready, and I showed up, this was right before Christmas 2021. Yes. And I showed up to get a booster and they did a bait and switch and said, Like oh. when you were sitting in the chair ready to get, they're like, oh, we don't have that. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. There's none of that. We don't have that here. We don't have that. When we called it confirmed repeatedly. Yeah, we only have Pfizer. And I was very pissed off, but at the same time, we were about to go into the Christmas holidays and... And now you were already in there. You'd already exposed yourself to this environment. And I also, I needed... Um, I needed vaccine documentation for employment. For employment. So, so I threw up my hands in rage and just like, all right, fuck it, just give me the goddamn give it to booster, me which was not the bivalent. It was not literally the same just shot. Just the same shot. Again. And I'm concerned that this has primed my immune system. Actually, that that primed my immune system so to long know. COVID susceptibility uh, okay. when exposed to, uh, to Omicron. Industry. Which was not covered yeah. well by that shot, you know. Right. Right. So, anyway, not That's that it. there were, you know, in January of 2022, there weren't there any weren't any any, any, any um, boosters that covered Omicron because it was they, they cannot pivot that quickly. They can't pivot that quickly. And and this right. is the even the flu shot they do an annual they do an update. annual flu shot and they try to make a prediction based on tracking and, and monitoring yeah. about what will be prevalent and tailor a vaccine for that prevalence that they're anticipating. Yeah. They don't always get it right, which, you know, we, we know that. It's, it's not yeah. like that's some kind of failure exactly. Right. Um, it, they they don't always make the right prediction. It's like predicting the weather. And the, the evidence from the flu also... Well, it's not. Uh, so one of these is not actually a coronavirus. It's not actually a coronavirus, but um, uh, I can't remember. Like there are some common cold coronaviruses and some non-coronavirus. Anyway, but the the evidence there there's there's a lot of uh, good reason to believe that that this uh, strategy of trying to chase COVID mutations. Chase variants. With and, periodic vaccinations, whatever period, you know. Right. Whatever the period is. is three months or one year. Will not be successful. It, like it, it can't, can't be successful. Oh, and just a size, a side note. The thing we're talking about where you have a, a nearly no mitigation vaccine site. Yes. This has actually been studied with influenza. Yes. Because people widely report, I'm sure you have heard. People say, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. got, the flu shot gave me the flu. Right. And what, so epidemiologists have responded to that widespread anecdata. Yes. And what we found by studying is that people routinely catch the flu getting their flu vaccine. Because guess what? People, this is not what you're supposed to do. Right. But people go there when they're sick. When they go sick. to get the shot because they're like, oh, I feel I'm like the flu is coming on. I, I better, better go get, get the a shot, shot for the season. Doesn't really help to. Like, it takes days. It takes days to weeks to to, to develop. develop a real immunity to yes. that your strain from the vaccination. So you're probably going to still go through your whole 
process um, of illness. Your whole acute illness of the flu, and layer onto that whatever response you have to the vaccine, the vaccine itself. Right. So it's probably going to actually make you feel sicker to do right. that. Right. So that's a documented thing that we understand. That if you are administering flu vaccinations without mitigations right. against flu, right. people will catch the flu when they get the vaccine. And yeah. then their assumption is, which is not a, it's not irrational, that they had flu symptoms from their flu shot. Would you briefly describe the scenario when, where, oh, you don't have to give the name of the place or whatnot, um, yeah. but like how we, what the circumstances was of, uh, of us getting the shots and what their mitigations were, like what their um, environment was like? Oh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. So it was, it's, uh, I, I am going to say this much, it was, it's an apothecary. It's a compounding pharmacy. It's a small pharmacy. So it's a small... Independent. Independent compounding pharmacy. Yeah. And compounding is important. They do a lot of... Um, they provide pharmaceuticals for natural and complementary medicine. Yes. In addition to mainstream pharma- pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, and they're... They usually have if compounding you, in the name. Like if you get a script for like B vitamin injections for a child or something, they'll mix it up for They'll mix you, it up. And, that's know, what they mean by compounding. Something like that. Um, but high ceilings, um, the people there masked when anyone came in. They didn't seem to be masking for themselves, right? No. Um, and, um, but it was also it was only one person there. Two. Oh, there were two. There were two people there. And we were the only patrons in the building along with them. Right until we were waiting to waiting leave. Waiting to leave, right? Yeah. And um, plenty of air exchanges. I could hear the ventilation. I don't know if they have filtration. Yeah. And um, reasonably safe. They were, and they also had a humidifier keeping the room had forty percent humidity. Oh, okay. Well, Which, the, yeah. the humidity was higher than that outside. Anyway. The humidity was higher than that, but no, forty yeah. percent humidity is what data has shown reduces the transmission of disease. Yes. It is not COVID specific. Yeah, drier is actually worse, oddly enough. Right. right. It's a little. It's a little counterintuitive. It's a little counterintuitive. If you think that maybe the humidity keeps the droplets aloft and survivable, but it's not quite like. It's not that. quite like that. There's a sweet spot, and it's forty percent humidity. Yeah. So I, I know that number. So I when I saw their humidifier set to forty percent humidity, you know, it's clearly a mitigation that they're engaging on purpose. Yeah. Um, so somebody actually smart. Was making set some decisions. Set that up. Right. Somebody know. set that up on purpose. And they were someone who'd done the reading. Um, and then uh, it, it was a sort of, uh, what do you call it? It wasn't complicated. It wasn't uh, a hassle. We gave them our, our idea, our information. They recorded it on our cards. Um, the insurance one, cards. Our, like a, your vaccine card. Insurance cards and vaccine cards. Yes. So they used insurance and... They used our vaccine cards, and they wanted uh, ID. Uh-huh. Um, one of our children went with us that, that does not have ID, and um, that was fine. We were prepared to be vouched for her. The other piece of information, this was very telling to me. They gave us a document to contact um, health authorities yeah. with any side effects we were experiencing. Whatever we experienced, please record that. And just get in touch there and make a note of what your experiences are over the first week of your after the vaccine. You pointed out that this was not just a reference to VAERS. No, this is not VAERS. Uh, that this was interesting to me because so many people cite raw VAERS data as like, do you see how many people like had this? They got a vaccine and then they uh, they fell off a, a ski lift and died. I'm so clearly, you know. I'm just saying. Or whatever. So. Um, and I don't want to like, get into mocking anti-vaxxers. No, but, the, uh, but people use raw VAERS data to make some kind of claim, and they look at the total numbers, and they're like, oh, my God, this caused... In other words, they look at these raw reports, mm-hmm. and they basically don't interpret them. They believe that this must mean that every one of these claims represents a clear and, and true, you know, negative side effect. Negative negative of, effect. Yeah. Um, this is actually not VAERS. It's something they do for emergency use authorization pharmaceuticals. So this is the thing, and people have talked about this sort of um, fine fine point. Yeah. That um, all of the vaccines we've been using to date 
or emergency use authorization. As in, they haven't passed final review. Yes. They haven't had stage like uh, stage four trials, and they are, um, by definition, not fully authorized. Yes. Right. So that. And this also protects the companies making them for liability. <laughs> liability. Right. Okay. So the next step is, during that period of emergency youth authorization, they want to collect data that is not fares data, but very specific data about what happens to a, a large population immediately after vaccination. What's so like what you'll have is the initial data gives them the information to make specific warnings. And as they receive more data, they either increase warnings, alter warnings, or ultimately, like if it's really bad, decide to change formulations and Right. And or not issue this anymore. Right. That that happened with the pertussis vaccine. Just to be very yes. Clear. And so it's it's useful. This is a real. It's a useful process. Feedback mechanism. And it's a real feedback mechanism that causes industry to change formulations, withdraw formulations altogether, and um, say free Palestine, and then um, <laughs> with penny purchase. <laughs> no, Stop you just that. passed the sign. You just passed the sign, free Palestine sign. Um, so that's what this process is. We had never received that document for the Pfizer vaccine no, no. or the J&J. That documentation yeah. was, not, was not even offered to us. Interesting. I just found it interesting. I found it interesting and was offered to us. And she said specifically, since you've been vaccinated before, you've probably already seen this, you still need to do it. Like... No. No? We've not seen this before? Oh, this, and she was like, this is the first time you've gotten this document? I said, yes. Yes. And we've got between us, you know, multiple, multiple shots. Multiple shots, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but that, that never happened. But um, this pharmacy for this vaccine was making that available. So they were probably following the actual, like, rules. The uh, actual uh, rules. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So uh, we're, we're running a little short on time in this leg Time of our better. errand but yeah. i want to ask specifically um side effects you noted from nova sore arm yeah shortly after like almost immediately gone anything else noticeable um oh there was something you mentioned you had that i thought i also had to do something about like uh was it joint yeah i joint okay joint. i should just say almost any vaccine i get I usually wind up with a, a day or two of malaise. I do have a sore arm for a while. It's not bad. I mean, it's not like terrible. It hurts to lift that arm or mm -hmm. like, especially if I, like, if I raise it outwards from my body then I'm straining, I'm stressing that muscle in, that it was literally injected into, right? I, I didn't even have that. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't joint pain. Uh, low grade fever. You had a low grade fever. Like 99, 100. Yeah. Low grade fever. Okay. So, and I had the, the, the joint pain there I had the the vaccine site pain very very mild and swelling it only lasted for a little while mm -hmm. uh went away actually mostly that day yes which was that's not that doesn't happen with a flu shot I no. for a flu shot it usually lasts me a weekend mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then I did have a little bit of what felt like joint inflammation and a little bit of maybe very low grade fever I didn't even take my temp because it felt so low yeah but um I take my temperature a lot yeah all of, I should just say, these things are all perfectly normal within our normal range for, for a vaccine, vaccine for any vaccine. It actually was milder than I usually get. Yes. So definitely milder. That was promising. Unfortunately, we're here at the store, and, and my phone is ringing like who the hell is calling? Who, who this phone? Call? What kind of the oh. audacity? Yeah. Nobody calls like with, to talk with their mouths anymore. That's so. That's bizarre. weird. Uh, anyway, we're gonna, I want to wind up, but then um, I want to not going to stop it quite yet because I want to talk about. It's not been very long, but mm -hmm. whether you've noticed anything that you might attribute to uh, um, uh, improvement in like uh, long COVID symptoms. I feel like some. I feel like I feel some brain fog is lifting. I'm also feeling like some of. Um, some of the fatigue is gone. Not all the fatigue. Yeah. There's this thing where um, you feel kind of like you need to go to sleep all day. Yeah. I've stopped feeling like I need to go, go to sleep all day. 
other kinds of fatigue where you mm -hmm. like uh, low energy, low capacity. Yeah, that's that still has, there. That's still there. Yeah. But that sensation, like you know, I should just go back to bed. Yeah. that's gone. I'm I'm gonna talk about a gross subject very briefly. Oh, go for it. Which is that I, on like day three or something, I passed some mucus in my stool, which is unusual for me. Mm -hmm. And um, not a lot, but like but it some. just suggests that maybe something's going on in my gut, some kind of uh, warfare. And warfare. that would be really interesting if this this um, vax succeeded in triggering, uh, like, in my, because apparently there's some evidence that that COVID can linger, COVID infection can linger in your, in gut. your gut, and. I, we take probiotics and all that, and that yes. that maybe helps, but it doesn't seem to have like wiped it out. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if this is evidence that there's this warfare is is means my body is winning now. Uh, that's well, I told you as an old wives tale, like an old mom's tale, quite literally. Right, right. That indicates that infection is, is ending. Is is is, is, is yeah. resolving. I also have seen like how long it's been end of week two no it's only been a week it's been one week. It's been one week i'm getting arthritis more arthritis symptoms in my fingers mm -hmm. which happens sometime mm -hmm. um and that tells me that's an that's an inflammatory response yes right well and yeah that's a you get an inflammatory if your immune system has been dampened yeah and you've you experience something that allows it to reawaken yes um you will have an inflammatory response throughout your body yeah a week later which yes. means that it's not the initial it's not the initial reaction, reaction. to the vaccine itself mm -hmm. so something's going on um, something. my uh the my it's a little hard to tell because my long covid symptoms wax and wane normally yes right? you have As, good days and you have bad days you have and, good weeks and you have bad weeks and they seem also in general very tied to how much restful sleep i'm able to get yes. right yeah but um the tingling in my feet tingling and burning in my feet has improved a little bit although they still feel bad sometimes mm -hmm. and I do agree with you I didn't mention it before but that my energy level and my um, so-called brain fog you know has lifted a little bit Listen. which is COVID does different things to the brain one of them is actual brain damage like yeah. permanent brain damage sure, brain shrinkage damage. and these cells like gluing themselves together it's I didn't really have any spare paul it's really horrifying me neither it's like i the, the the this especially worries me not in terms of being a little dulled you know or whatnot mm -hmm. but in like a little slowed uh, um but in terms of being able to do my job because i after 40 years of programming i'm a very very high performing software engineer right, right. who out can out program almost everyone I've ever met in a work, work setting. Right. Right. And if I can't do that anymore, or like I'm dramatically impaired at that, that's that's bad news it's for bad. the rest of my career. Yeah. Right. So that's been worrying me a lot. Um, at, but yeah, then there's also, I, some of what you call brain fog, I think is brain damage, like we've described. Yes. And some of it, I think, is actually just like impaired circulation. Which oh, right, is like, like an, an inflammatory response where your circulation isn't... Which is probably recoverable. That's recoverable. The brain yeah. damage is not. So just having like low circulation to your brain on a given day that isn't bad enough to cause cell death or whatnot, but it just means like your cells aren't, your brain cells aren't functioning at top capacity normal i don't know i'm not a neurologist but that that's my impression mm -hmm. but it does seem like i'm getting a little clarity back i'm still not able to read very well and this is really concerning me because i was a person who was frequently reading as many as seven books simultaneously and yeah. and when i was recording um that i was i read well over a book a week on average on average and yeah, not you a, not yeah. a little book you no, know? <laughs> right. you really you plod through the reading. It's true. And since then, since um, long COVID symptoms began, I haven't. I, I've barely completed probably six books. Yeah. And they're not even big books. And I've given up more books than I finished. Yeah. All right. Anyway, 
but this it seems like I can't attribute this and say this absolutely has cured you or, know, or in some a, sense or even a full remission or even a full remission but it right. seems like promising it's so far mm -hmm. um, I don't want to overstate it and also I don't want to overstate we're still living in a very dangerous pandemic where if we like we get rid of one strain in our bodies but we're constantly exposed, exposed to, to more strains that Novavax wasn't tailored to cover because it's also old? Uh, yes, but what we found about the subunit protein vaccines... It's a little broader. Their protection is broader. Yeah. That's what we found about Soberana 2, and that's that's what the evidence is for Novavax. Well. Yeah. They I'm, have broader protection. And Novavax is, is releasing a um, an updated vaccine for this fall. Yeah. I, I want to mention just in terms of the overall arc. So the reason we got it on that Friday... Oh yes. Yeah, I mentioned that. They expire on they expired on July thirtieth. The whole supply that's pardon, June thirtieth. The supply that was in circulation expired in the US. In the US. Expired on, on June thirtieth. So it was literally our last possible day. The last possible day to get it before they release new ones in the fall. Um, and the, the only yeah. the, the only reason we were able to get it locally without having to go out of state and lie. Mm -hmm. was because they changed the guidelines on what kind of booster you were allowed to get. Yes. So if you are, and specifically, there's a specific line that says, if you've received XYZ vaccine in the past, the mRNA or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and you refuse to get another one, then you may choose to have a Novavax. Now, most pharmacists and practitioners don't know this. Because they they're not publicizing it because no. of Pfizer it's sitting on it's, squatting on the whole industry like a giant malignant fart, you know, like yeah, um, tumor, 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 anyway. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, or just uh, to put it a, a, a more politely, they have a near monopoly, a near monopoly in this region, and right. especially their uh, marketing, and, right? And especially, I think, in Washington County where we live, and they. They like. Let's just say also that they, um, they offer perks to so many physicians that people don't want to even consider going. And against and, them. and is that even less? It's even more subtle than perks, right? Yeah. Our own health department has a bias in favor of Pfizer. Yeah. And as soon as you cross the county line to Wayne, because we were in Wayne County, right, right. And as soon as you cross the county line to Monroe County, they're like, you know, Ohio. Uh, well, there's uh, Monroe County, Michigan, and then you know the, the Ohio's on the docket at all because their system is not connected to Michigan's system, so they can't just look right. up that we've received the vaccine. Right, before. right. So we could we did consider going to an out-of-state pharmacy and lying, say no, we've never had a vaccine before. Yeah, give us our number vax series uh, to get a primary. So. To get a primary. But we'd have to go back to get a second shot. We have to go back to get a second shot, and and um. If we had chosen to lie and go out of state, we probably could have gotten everyone 12 and up. Yeah. Because um, it's authorized for that as a primary vaccine. But we would have had to lie. We would have had to... Um, take days off work. Take, us, take days off work, etc. It would have been a whole production. Big rigor moral. And for me, I would have had to ask my children who are morally culpable to... To lie. To lie. Right. To participate in a lie. Yeah. To actually yeah. participate in a lie. Which I'm just, I'm and not we here don't, for. We don't want to train them in that. They, no, you know, That's no. not the example we want to set. So we, we did this. Um, but I think it's interesting news that EU just approved Novavax yes. and is planning a rollout. And you uh, know and what? A full, a full approval. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I think that it's actually appropriate to trust, say, Germany's public health decision making over America's. Oh, yeah, over America's definitely, yeah. So... But uh, what I will, and I've got to say about that, though, is this is something that I was saying about Soberana 2 in its, it like, when it was very nascent, and they were still, mm -hmm. like, doing those uh, preliminary things, like, looks looks like 90, 95% of efficacy kind yeah, of tests, right? Yeah, um, That they were actually aiming for, they were aiming for something that's more sterilizing and reduces transmission. Right. They were aiming for right. something, um, and which, in this case... The closest you're going to get to an actual sterilizing vaccine is a targeted nasal vaccine. I'm yes. not going to have that separate and, conversation and, right now. But that also only la lasts a short while. Lasts a short while. Yeah. Um, but for an inject, uh, 
the intramuscular injection, uh, that's a sub protein subunit. protein subunit vaccine that does this. And it's a very well established piece of technology. Yeah. And it's where Cuba started because it's cheap to make, it's easy to refrigerate, it's easy to transport. Right. So um, I suspected that after Pfizer made a ton of money, the United States would quietly pivot. Yes. Without saying anything about the pivot. Right. Right. To protein subunit vaccines. I can imagine that Pfizer will just release a, an updated version, yeah. which actually no longer uses mRNA. Exactly. It was trumpeted so much as this huge breakthrough, but yet we haven't seen a lot of them, anyone rolling out a lot of other successful mRNA vaccines. Not, not really. I mean, it's, it is being used for other things. It, it's being, yeah, it's, it's being, being used, it's being tested, yeah. experimented with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something really important to understand about this. Is not for Pfizer, it's really not just about the earnings. It's about having a proprietary position yeah. with this technology and having a, a really a broad database on what it does and how it does it. Yeah. And so this was a huge opportunity to get that kind of information. And they don't want to Except have any liability something about that's it. not well, that, but they also don't want to have something that, that they can be willing to share with other countries. Precisely. So they do, so they want it proprietary, they want a huge data set, and they want us to pay them for doing the research. Yeah, exactly. Rather than investing in the hence research. Hence this warp speed, hence all this federal funding all tied, federal. tied up with Pfizer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, versus, say, J&J's vaccine, which, you know, between the two was the better vaccine. Yeah. It, Full stop. Yeah, okay. So, again, like, don't get it twisted I personally am not an anti-vaxxer in general. I want to see effective and appropriate use of this tool in a toolkit of many things. Many mitigations. But the you know the non-pharmaceutical interventions honestly are cheaper and easier cheaper. and have far fewer side effects. Non-pharmaceutical right? interventions are king. And we but should really. always be trying to promote that first. Literally, the vaccine is a backup for when you, when all those NPIs fail. Right. The vaccine is your last resort yes. intervention. Right. Absolute last resort intervention. And to, for the, you know, and for the, the Biden administration and the Trump administration to basically promote this as the only intervention, really, that we were going to do long term that ha has, you know, with any consistency, is just. It's morally depraved. 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 It's absolutely depraved. Yeah. It's, and, yeah, and uns unscientific. And, well. Well, and let me give you the, the, the clear example, MPIs versus um, pharmaceuticals. And I, this will be my last bit. So you know Katie, Katie had a terrible cholera problem. And it's starting to resurge in the wake of COVID, but they had terrible cholera situation. Yes. And um, Western countries wanted to give them a very... Because there was a cholera vaccine. Mm -hmm. They wanted to distribute as aid. And I think most of you already know the problems with aid, um, federal aid and like yeah. um, overseas aid. Yeah. Um, they wanted to distribute cholera vaccines. And they wanted to have American or Western contractors do large infrastructure projects in Haiti. Yes, yes. Um, and this Haiti should, should, should sound familiar because it's basically how we got rich both by by destroying yeah, Iraq like and then doing a shitty job rebuilding Iraq. Iraq. Like right. it's a thing. It's a thing it's, we do. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. And um, Haiti said no to that. Haiti's got a long history of saying no. Yes. And um, and Western response says, well, sucks, good luck dying. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. Good luck dying from cholera. Yeah. Haitians built outhouses and used human waste composting to basically eradicate their localized epidemic of cholera. They, keep, they keep literally it out of the water. Or right. They literally just dug shitholes. It makes a. It gives new meaning to waste stream. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. So they literally just dug a shithole, yeah. and they dug them everywhere, and they used hand labor, like with unskilled people, mm -hmm. to make this intervention to remove fecal waste from the water from the water supply. system from the water supply. Yeah. They did this everywhere. They did it consistently. They made them public. They made them free. If you need to poop, go here. If you don't have functioning plumbing in your house, please use these. 
Yes. And they, so they did that. They were innovating new ways of, of making public toilets that will automatically charge your PayPal account or whatever. Uh, right, right. No, this was none of that. They just, they just made sure people had a place to shit. Yes. That was literally the intervention. Yeah. An awful lot of, uh, you know, historically, an awful lot of the most effective public health interventions just involve shit. Right? Just involve shit. Uh, and just there's involve no, water. there's no prettifying it, right? Right. There's really no, just, that's, that's it. Right? It's that basic. And so, because you can't, because you can't shit where you eat, you yes. just can't. Yes. Yes. No matter what capitalism says. Right. <laughs> that intervention saved countless lives. It cost them almost nothing. Yes. And they did that by themselves. Right. Um, they didn't, meanwhile, they didn't need an mRNA technology to do. Meanwhile, that. capitalists wanted them to use their shitty vaccine. Yeah. Uh, the cholera vaccine is about as effective as a COVID vaccine six months out. Yeah. It's almost nothing. Yeah. So, and it doesn't protect small children who are most at risk. Right. So, um, I think that's all we need to know about NPIs versus pharmaceuticals. Sure, it's great. Don't don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I'm terrified about. We're about to run out of antibiotics and and oxycodone. Oh yeah, there's this. We're like less than six months. Oh, out. by the way, this is Pfizer that that is running out of antibiotics. Am I right? Okay, I'm just saying. Yeah. So we're less. And, and that's a terrible thing. Um, it's the worst possible news yeah. that we're in six months of being out of these pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Meanwhile, we've had broken the world record for hottest day four days in a <gasps> row. <laughs> Go us! Anyway, so here we are running our car. So, 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 but seriously, that's the situation with pharmaceuticals versus NPIs. Yeah. NPIs applied consistently as a cultural norm yes which i'm sorry haters that involves shame yeah that's that's how you teach people and people want to split hairs and say it's peer pressure and this and that and it's not really shame and blah 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 and shame doesn't change behavior yeah um it's the same thing it's a separate conversation we need to have about psychiatry and how um effective their studies are right that said right um really NPIs and their cultural widespread social implementation are extraordinarily effective. Right. It's huge, huge impact. And it really um, pharmaceutical interventions are, are dwarfed by what NPIs can do carried out consistently and broadly. That's so there, there, is, um, th there is a plan to release uh, a bivalent um, or updated Novavax, updated Novavax. In, yep. in the U.S. in the fall. Yes. And enough people are paying attention now that I think that will happen and that will be made available, made available. in a more widespread way. Mm -hmm. And if you choose, you know, with, you know, consulting with your physician and whatever your specific health concerns are, et cetera, et cetera, if you choose to pursue a vaccination, I'm going to recommend that you look into... Novavax as a as a viable decision and possibly a more effective decision than just getting another round of mRNA boosters from from Pfizer. I will say this, but you oh, don't boy. have to. You know, like no, I, I cannot unequivoc unequivocally recommend any COVID vaccine. This is what I, I can will unequivocally say. recommend: rabies vaccine if you're exposed to rabies. Absolutely right. Um, but no I, I there. cannot absolutely unequivocally recommend. Any COVID vaccine for for everyone. It, it yes. Make this, you know, between you, you, God, and your doctor. You have that conversation. Right. Um, I will say this, that if you're considering a, uh, getting vaccinated for COVID already, yeah. and there's something that you want to do, J&J yeah. um, &J mm -hmm. was, significantly, was a significantly better vaccine than any of the mRNA vaccines. Mm -hmm. And uh, Novavax or any sub- uh, protein it's subunit vac it, yeah. vaccine is better than J and J. Yeah, I, I will say that. Okay. All right. So we're gonna wind it up. Yeah, that's it. That's what I gotta say. Okay. Check thank you all for listening. I thought, I thought that was good. So we'll get this out as soon as I can, and we're gonna do the rest of our grocery pickup, and then it's movie night. Movie night. Have a good day, everybody. Take care and stay safe, guys. Bye bye.